Ambassador Oksana Markarova is joining us to talk about a, a few things regarding Ukraine and the war in Ukraine. You, Ambassador, first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, I want to ask you briefly to give us your, a sense of what the war status is today in Ukraine. Well, you know, 380th day. Uh, a lot of people a year ago would not even think that it's possible to to uh, to fight for such a long time. And the situation is difficult. The fight on the front line is difficult. Uh, the assaults everywhere in Ukraine. And just yesterday, Ukraine again sent more than 80 missiles and drones all over the place, killing innocent civilians, destroying infrastructure. So all of that is difficult. But 380 days after the, it started on the 24th of February, one thing remains unchanged. Our resolve and our will to defend our country and to liberate our country and to, for, to fight for every Ukrainian and for every inch of Ukrainian territory. So, um, you know, the devastating yesterday's uh, attack has created again a lot of disruption, brought the deaths. Uh, the front line in Bakhmut, in Ugledar, in all the places that, you know, uh, Americans or other citizens of the world never knew existed, you know, because those are not some large or prominent uh, international type of cities. But, you know, the fight continues and uh, more than ever, it shows that we need to win. We need to win and we need to get faster to just and last and peace. The um, the fact that Russia used six hypersonic missiles yesterday in this attack, what does that tell you? Well, first of all, um, the time between the attacks, yesterday's attack and the previous, was longer than the times between uh, attacks that they started last October, especially using this high-precision missiles in order to, to disrupt and destroy our infrastructure. Um, but, you know, they clearly are trying to inflict as much damage as possible. They clearly do not have any any rules with regard to what what are the, you know, what are the red, li red lines? Even when you are at war with someone, you know, there are some rules of engagement. Well, clearly it's not for Russia. I mean, the war in Ukraine from the very fact of aggression, which is a war crime, which is illegal and completely unjustified and unprovoked to everything they do on the ground, you know, sending the uh, supersonic missiles, uh, sending the Shahid drones and other, doing crimes, war crimes and atrocities of unimaginable proportions on a daily basis, especially where they occupy still main parts of Ukraine. So um, it tells us that their intent to destroy us is still there. Uh, and, um, you know, we just have with all our friends and allies to see that for what it is and double down on our side. So more missiles, more uh, uh, weapons support to Ukraine, more sanctions to Russia, isolate Russia until they stop the aggressive war. And of course, the issue of justice is very important. As you saw, the uh, attorney general recently was in Ukraine last week in Lviv. Uh, with a number of prosecutors from other countries. Uh, of course, you know, the historic visit of President Biden. Uh, Ukraine still talks about it. Ukrainian people really appreciate that visit. It was such a big sign of support. And we have to do that. We have to stay together and be strong and uh, stop Russia. Today in Ukraine, a young man by the name of Da Vinci and that wasn't his name, but that's what they call him. Da Vinci was laid to rest. And that has been an absolutely extraordinary young life that was taken in this war. Can you tell us about Da Vinci and why Da Vinci was so important to Ukraine? Dmitro is a remarkable, brave, patriotic talent that we lost two days ago. And it's even difficult to talk about it. He, he went to serve the country in 2014, volunteered when he was only 18. He spent all this time defending the country. He was uh, one of the youngest heroes of Ukraine, the highest honor that could be given to a soldier. His wife is on the front lines too, she was with him. Uh, the loss of 
motivated, patriotic, bright kids like like he was, is a tragedy. And yet in this situation, um, Da Vinci and people like him did not see any other choice for them, like all of us, because we don't have other homes. This is the only home we have, and we are fighting for it, all of us, from our brave president to our uh, chief commander Zaluzhny, who, who both visited Da Vinci's funeral today, because it was such a, Da Vinci was such a symbol of this young generation, the first generation that actually was born in free Ukraine, because I'm the last generation that was born still under Soviet occupation. But Da Vinci and, and young women and men as him will never agree to live under occupation again. And we now owe to them, all of us Ukrainians, to win in this war, continue the fight and win in this war. Well, there was some good news today, too, if you if 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 that's what you can call it. Um, I know that you had an event at the embassy today to repatriate some artifacts. Can you tell us about that process? Yes, what a, a great story. Uh, the U.S. Customs and Border Control together and the home, Homeland Security team uh, has been able to, to get the early warning about the Ukrainian artifacts that been sent from Russia to the United States. Some people tried to sell them and they were stolen from Ukraine. And the Customs and Border Control team was able to locate them, stop them, connect with us and the embassy team together with the Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Foreign Affairs back home very quickly analyzed and we clearly saw that a number of these artifacts are Ukrainian in fact. Uh, some of them from as early as 5th and 6th century, some of them from the 10th uh, century and 13th century and up to, uh, you know, the swords and, uh, you know, uh, amazing, amazing really artifacts which also prove that even then, you know, Ukrainians have been mighty warriors in addition to being the bread growers who everyone knows we are. We are very peaceful, but when we need to defend the country, we do that. So it, it was a miracle in a sense, but also a result of amazing job of uh, the custom and border control. Uh, and it's just the beginning. I mean, they are focusing a lot on that, but also the significance of that. You know, this war, uh, Russia started this war in 2014, in order to deny us right to be who we are, you know, in order to deny us right to be Ukrainians. And they repeatedly attacked our culture and cultural uh, objects. During this last year, they specifically targeted museums, they specifically targeted universities or historical sites in Ukraine and destroyed them, not as a collateral damage during the war effort, but specifically targeted them. So we do, uh, work with the U.S. in order to preserve the cultural heritage, and there are a lot of programs. And this additional work with the custom and border control protection is a very important element of actually give, getting back what Russians are stealing, because we have lost a lot on the occupied territories. When we liberated, we saw that they have taken the, the paintings, the artifacts, the historical, the books, you know. So it's it 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 it's a very significant event, and it was a happy event uh, today at the embassy, and we will be sending the swords and other artifacts back home. Okay, um, Ambassador, is there anything else that I haven't asked you about that you want to talk about today that you think is important to share before you go today? Well, I think the notice of justice is very important. I mean, a lot of people think about justice is something that you get after you win the war, and in case of Ukraine. Of course, the priority number one is weapons and sanctions for Russia and support to Ukraine, which we are very grateful to American people for supporting us, supporting us all this year and before. And we are kindly asked to support us more because we need to stay the course, we need to win. But justice is, is something that we are also doing as we fight. So we have already more than 72,000 criminal cases related to war crimes or war crimes in Ukraine that we are prosecuting as we speak because our courts are operating, our prosecutor's office and US is helping us a lot uh, with, with uh, collecting evidence and analyzing it, all the technical assistance. But it's also very important in addition to all the international courts, like the International Criminal Court, the Court of Justice and others, which Ukraine already filed cases, to have international tribunal to indict Putin 
and everyone around him for the crime of aggression. To send a resounding symbol, that is a signal that it's not only the crimes on the ground, not only what they're doing to us after they attacked, but the very fact that they decided to attack and to start the aggressive war is a crime that has to be punished. So um, we are doing that and we are, you know, asking everyone, all the countries support us at the UN level for that very important initiative that will restore justice. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, Ukraine needs to win not only for the sake of Ukraine, but also for the sake of all three people to be able to believe in the international global uh, security architecture and the rule of law that should be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, Ambassador Oksana Markarova, thank you as always uh, for talking with us and sharing these important stories and storylines with us today. Thank you very much.